What is up, nerds? I'm Tom. And I'm Wes. We're Neverboard Gaming, and today we're hanging out with our buddy and brother-in-law. I'm Wood Table Gun Guy with Just Making Videos. And his name's Mike. We're taking a look at Total Recall by Overworld Games on Kickstarter. Now, or, or it was, or it will be. <laughs> Hey guys, so I don't play games a whole lot just with these two clowns as much as possible. And uh, Total Recall was good for me because there are very quick turns, it's very easy to pick up, and it's, it's multifaceted. So there's a lot of things going on that you have to constantly watch even when it's not your turn. You're watching everybody else's turn, so you're constantly in the game. And what I like best about it was that there's no elimination. You can't get eliminated or, or out of the game quickly. You stay in and you keep going. So Total Recall is actually the third iteration of the good cop, bad cop system. There was good cop, bad cop, and leaders of euphoria, and now Total Recall. And it is definitely not just like a, a shameless reskin. There's definitely differences in this game from the other two versions. Um, and the main one is what Mike was talking about, is that there's no player elimination in this version as there is with good cop, bad cop. Which I feel like if you're comparing it to the other three versions, that's the thing. So, like, there was Good Cup, Bad Cup, and then Leaders of Euphoria, which also had that no elimination mechanic, but they went, like, really far away. And I feel like this one kind of, like, brings it back a little bit. So it's, like, it pulls a lot more from Good Cup, Bad Cup than Leaders of Euphoria did, but it still has that no elimination that Leaders of Euphoria did. And kind of has, like, a nice happy middle point in the middle. In the middle. Now, if you haven't played Good Cop, Bad Cop, or Leaders of Euphoria, what Total Recall really is, is it's kind of a hidden role game where you have different teams, Team Red and Team Blue, which is the Fed team and the Rebel team. And, you know, kind of like Resistance or Werewolf, you know, you win with your team, but you don't know who's on your team. And just like Werewolf or Resistance, where you get one card that tells you which team you're on, in this game, you'll actually get three cards. So it's the majority, it's almost four cards. It's the majority of those cards that you get determines the team that you're on. If you get two blue and one red, then, well, you're team blue. So throughout the course of the game, you can investigate and like slowly look at one card that another person has and look at this card over here. So if I look at Wes and I see he has a red and then on the next turn I look and I see he has a blue, did I gain any information really? So that investigating is really a lot of how the game starts. Everyone's just like looking at each other's cards and trying to figure out who's on my team, who's not on my team, where are you? Oh, he's looking at me, do I need to look at him? And I feel like because that's really the whole first chunk of the game, it's easy to teach new players. Because you're like, okay, well, this is how it's going to start. We're all just going to be looking at each other's cards, and it's going to kind of go from there. So I think there's a really easy like, entry level where you ease them into it. And then, okay, well, right now I'm just looking at cards. Oh, now I know what team he's on. What do I do from there? And you can kind of take that as you go. So I feel like new players, there's not like it. It starts, you're trying to think, oh, what's my mission? What am I trying to do? Oh, he's doing that. Do I need to be doing that? Do I need to be doing this? But there's a very like straightforward, okay, when the game starts, you just investigate a lot, figure out who's in the teams, and then from there you can shoot them, you can help them, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a very soft start where you're doing a lot of investigating, like Wes said, and, and that helps you kind of like ease into the game a little bit as you're watching what the other players are doing, as you're kind of forming your game plan. Who's the leader? Am I the leader? You know, I, I, first time I played, I got stuck as the leader, so I, now I know, okay, I got half of the game figured out. Now I just got to identify the red leader, which could be a little bit easier. So you can, as a new player, you really ease into it pretty, pretty nicely. And one of the main things that I think separates this game system from like the Resistance or Werewolf are the plot cards. So everybody gets dealt one of these, and these are really big game changers. So we spend the first half of the game figuring out who's on what team, but then somebody can drop a plot card and just say, nope, I'm going to swap these two cards. Now they're going to be on different teams. Or, or maybe, you know, mm. I just swapped, they were face out, and I just swapped two reds, and I didn't do anything, but everybody else at the table goes, ooh, wait, now who's who? Or, you know, you're, you're tallying up all this information in your head. Well, I saw he was two reds and a blue, and that was a red and two blues, but which position was, were they? And when I go to swap, you know, and or now turn order just switched. Or I'm going to shoot this guy. Nope, you don't. He's getting shot now. Like, the, the amount of wacky craziness that can happen that's you know almost hard to prepare for is extremely high and that's one of the things that I think one of the reasons why I think this game has a leg up on like just regular you know vanilla resistance or werewolf. So the other thing that makes this iteration different from the other ones is the turbinium which right now I don't know if you can see it's this little crystal thing and the actual game that's just a prototype and the actual game is gonna be these cool little metal bars and they're almost a resource that you get and spend in the game. So the way you do it is that when you go to get a plot card, you have to give one of your turbinium to another player, meaning that you can't get a plot card if you don't have the turbinium. How do you get turbinium? 
every time you point your gun at a player, you take all of their turbidium. So, like, certain players can kind of start stockpiling it because if they're not buying block cards, just keep pointing their guns, they're getting it. Or if Tom has five and I point a gun at him, I get all five of those. So that can really affect who you're pointing your gun at. Like, oh, well, I know I want to kill him, but he doesn't have any turbidium, so I'm going to point it at someone else, or I'm just going to point a gun to get turbidium to buy a plot card. I have no intention of shooting them. So it, it can add to that, like, bluffing, deduction, figuring out, okay, why did he point his gun at him? Is he on my team? Is he not on his team? And it really just gives it another level that the other games don't. Yeah, it's always interesting to play games with, uh, with Tom and Wes because... Um, they're pointing guns at each other. They're shooting each other. Meanwhile, the, the red and blue leaders are on the other side of the table, and it's like, what are you guys doing? They're just stealing turbidium from each other and shooting each other. <laughs> Pretty much any game that the two of us play, we're going to get at each other's throats, even if we're on the same team. We already said that the biggest difference between this and Good Cop, Bad Cop is that there's no player elimination. So what if you get shot and you're not the leader, which is, you know, the objective is to kill the other team's leader? Well, then you flip over to this third team, the Recall Scientist team, where really, you don't care about red team, blue team, or anything like that. All you care about is Turbinium. If your team has all the Turbinium at the table and nobody else has it, then you win. And you also have different actions, too, so you're not, you know, investigating or whatever, because again, you don't care. You don't even have character cards. All you care about is getting that Turbinium, so you can steal it from a player, you can make, force people to point their gun at somebody else. You just, you just really, really mess with the game a whole bunch. And since nobody can point a gun at you to steal the Turbinium from you, that really puts a clock on the game. So it reduces all this, ooh, I'm just gonna shoot wildly while I don't have any information, because once you do that, if you make a mistake, oh great, now we have like six turns before he's gonna take all the Turbinium, kind of by default, and the game's gonna be over and he's gonna win, so I better hurry up and do what I gotta do. Yeah, putting the recall scientists in the game puts that clock on the game where they're gonna collect a turbinium every turn, basically. There's a finite amount of turbinium on the table, so once that certain amount of turns or rounds is reached, that recall scientist is basically gonna win. The other thing that's interesting about it is if you are playing as a recall scientist, you have to be almost a little like tricky about it. Because like not only are you trying to like steal the turbinium and make sure that the other leaders don't get shot before you get all of it, because obviously if like the blue leader dies, the red team wins before you have all the turbinium. You can't just always take turbinium because if the gun's pointed at the leader, you have to take your turn to move the gun away. But like Tom was saying, that you can't shoot wildly because if there's like two or three players playing as the recall scientists, obviously they're gonna be grabbing turbinium like crazy. And we actually played one game that was really interesting where like I had my gun pointed at the leader, and if I shot them, they were gonna die. So the only thing that their team did was to shoot me. It's the only way they could stop me, but I had all the turbinium on the table. So they shot me, I became a recall scientist, and then won the game that way. That's why pot cards are important, because mm -hmm. that's the only way you can change it, is play a pot card to get, oh, I'm just gonna get another turbinium from the supply, or I'm gonna force you to point your gun somewhere else, or drop your gun. I appreciated the recall scientist, especially as the noob, because oftentimes I'll be one of the first out of a game. So having that option as, as the third faction was good for me that I know I'm not out. I don't have to go uh, sit on the side and make drinks for everybody else. I can actually <laughs> keep playing. So of course, I really enjoyed Total Recall. I mean, I'm a big fan of the Good Cop, Bad Cop system as a whole. I love Good Cop, Bad Cop and Leaders of Euphoria. And this one obviously just slides right in there. It's a, it's a different theme and kind of a, a unique one. You know, I mean, I liked the movie Total Recall. I liked the, the original Schwarzenegger one. The, the remake was, was really garbage. But I never see, you know, a game with this type of theme on it, obviously. So this is definitely going to be something very unique that I'm going to have on my shelf. Total Recall is absolutely a very solid game. It's great if you're a completionist, you have to have all the good cop, bad cops. Or if like, you've played a buddy's good cop, bad cop, and you're like, well, I don't need to buy that. He has it. Oh, I love Total Recall. I should totally get this game now. So I have my own theme. It's, I love it. It's great. I haven't actually seen any of the Total Recall movies, but... From what I've seen, it's totally got the little guy bursting out of his chest as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. There's a thing about the three hands. It's like, what more could you want? That's the whole movie right there. So again, coming from a guy who doesn't play a whole lot of games that all that often, I thought this was very easy gameplay. It was a very uh, easy startup, a lot of quick turns, and you, you don't get eliminated, so you get to stay in the whole time. So I did enjoy it. So I would back this one. If you're watching this video on YouTube, we'll put a link to the Kickstarter page in the description box down below. And if you're already on Kickstarter, the back button's right up there. Why haven't you backed it yet? And don't forget to hit like on this video, subscribe to Neverboard Gaming. Uh, you can have Tom's personal phone number, ladies, give him a call. <laughs> but that's true, though, and you'll never be bored. You gotta do the guns at the end. No one's talking about the guns at the end. <laughs> you good. Yeah. What's up, nerds? So I don't get to play video games, huh? Are you serious? <laughs>
Did you want me to do that now? <laughs> the only thing I didn't like about Total Recall is I wish I had three hands. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. Hey, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, give these guys a follow. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah! I'm ready to. I'm ready to get to work. <laughs> Shirt's coming off. <laughs> what? What kind of video comes next? <laughs>